those guys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all right. Nice, nice show. All right, all right, thanks. Wow, you guys laughed at all the funny stuff. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Fanny was back there. Oh, they actually understood I was joking when I made that legal comment. I was like, yes, they, they understand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thankfully. Thank you so much. You're, you're really an awesome audience. I hope everybody gets everything. Isn't Gene Comic the funniest thing on the face of the <laughs> I mean, I loved him today. He's not alive anymore, unfortunately. He was an amazing character. I mean, so much of this for me was so much about how much these guys got where things were going before they went there. I was going through the archival, like, how did they possibly know that this is what was going to happen to the world? But um, should I bring them out? What do we want to do? Let's, uh, without further ado, uh, Sean Parker and Sean Fanny. <laughs> This is an acapella number we've been working on. Uh, it's I Disappear by Metallica without any instrument. I'll tell you until it sleeps. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's what we've been arguing about. Yeah. You know, it's funny, this is so heady for me in a funny way because I've seen the movie and of course I love it, I know it intellectually, but it's something to kind of be backstage, uh, kind of on the phone, sort of thinking about the people that change the world that we live in today. So it's really, it's kind of an amazing thing. Uh, thank you for being here. And it's kind of, you've been working on this for so long. Talk about that, like when you thought, like, I know this is a story and I'm going to stay on it. You know? uh, yeah, I, um, I met these guys a long time ago when Napster was, was basically over, but um, was in its end death throes. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was a big Napster user and, and really felt personally when I first got on in 99 that for those of us who were dabbling with the web, this was such a radical jump forward. It was kind of, it's really hard to describe uh, what a revolutionary change it was for all of us who were, who were beginning to get online. And for me, it was like a global community. I remember when I first met, I was like, that's what I loved so much about it. Um, and it was just a story that I really felt needed to be told. It got so, Middlehop puts it really well. I think that the perception of Napster was very misleading in the press. And, I just really stuck with this until I felt like whether anyone agrees with us or not, we're going to get the story out there. So that was my backstory to it. And this is your lives. How are you feeling? I mean, it's such a complex, long time, you know, 90 minutes, give or take. How are you feeling about this particular version? Uh, you know, I think this was something that could have been told many different ways. And uh, I think going into it, it was pretty unnerving given how many different phases there were. And uh, it was 12 years getting this. Yeah, and actually, I think I kind of came out of it feeling like Alex had a better sense of vision and understanding than either of us did based on the results. So thank you for sticking it out. Certainly than either of us were called. Yeah. Um, That's right, yeah. It's weird actually watching it with you guys and seeing it beforehand actually felt like watching it from the outside. I mean, so much of it was a blur. Um, I think, you know, you managed to kind of wade through the bullshit and find the kind of essence of what it was about. And I don't think could really ask for a better job. So it, it was it was cool. It's a complicated it's a complicated story that could have been told from from you know very easily from one perspective or the other. And to make a documentary that, that really kind of gets you a sense of the historical context, where it's all ended up, but also tells sort of both sides of the story in an objective way, I think is difficult to do, especially to do in an entertaining way. So Coming here, I wasn't totally sure how the audience would react to it. Um, it seemed like everybody was pretty into it. Um, it was actually the, the, the guys sitting in front of me were really into it because I was whispering like to my fiance, and they told me to shut up. <laughs> I said, All right, yeah, this is working out well. <laughs> we can open. We can take a couple of questions from the audience. Sure. Uh, so obviously there's a shot where you see Keith Austin weird sticker and the credits have some about filming in Austin. What what did you shoot here? Uh, uh, okay, I don't mind. Yeah, uh, we uh, we shot uh, in Austin. Uh, we did a panel. Uh, Sean and Sean and I did a panel last year. Uh, Janet, it's very nice to have us come down and we did a five minute clip of the movie, um, which is the first time they'd ever seen any of it. I remember the most. It's like I was actually mortified, uh, but. Uh, I came down and shot some interviews because it was just always stuff to grab. So I got Aaron Wadamus, who's Aaron. Raise your hand. There he is. 
There's the man right there. It's up there. Um, I shot Aaron here, and I shot the panel itself, which we were able to fit online. For me, it's like the movie is, is should be a conversation. <laughs> it's definitely not the end of anything. You know, no one's making a proclamation. So uh, I want to use that panel. It's, it's all them talking, and it's great stuff. Uh, and then as the movie rolls out, there's a lot of other great material that we have that we're going to roll out with the movie. So. That's the other reason I wanted to show I like that you say that you were mortified at that trip. If I had to watch my 18-year-old self on screen... That's why I was mortified. I was mortified, mortified, more pain. mortified would have been us watching Bill and Ted. That's true. <laughs> true. The, the mortified would have been you playing air guitar in my face for... Yeah. Um, but the night is young. Um, okay. Yes. Um, my... Alex, you accomplished something in the film that I didn't know. Is that actually there's a thread of both the Shawns caring about artists' rights. And the way it was spun in the media was that that wasn't an issue for them. So I'd like to ask the two of you. Today, there's another film here called uh, about the uh, Pirate Bay, which is a very different kind of story. But how do you see the new technology today actually delivering to indie artists, not corporations, not these large record companies that still exist, but to the individual creative person with the new technology, some compensation for their work? Well, so, every, so everybody can hear it. It was just uh, the idea is that the film, the film showed that they had a sensitivity to artists, which the media didn't uh, talk about at the time. So the question is, how do you feel the models are now, really, in terms of, for indie artists, sort of possibilities that way? I'll make a short comment first. I think um, one of the things I, I forgot about, but we really refused to take any revenue. I remember plenty of pressure to take uh, money even for T-shirts sales and things like that until we could actually share it. So we actually stuck to that, and uh, you know I think that that said said something. The point about us not wanting to cooperate and suing us made, made me laugh. Um, but you know, uh, ultimately, I think uh, Sean can comment on this. It's been over a decade, and I think there's been some progress. And so some of the stuff with Spotify, and uh, if you want to take that, I think is actually. I mean, there, there, there was one on another thing historically that, that I don't think was pointed out in the movie, which was. We, we could have very easily done video sharing where most of the content would have been user generated. We could have done like document sharing like you, you see a lot of companies. It, exactly. We could have hidden behind the other content types and probably kept the service running. But the reason we stuck to music was that we were huge music fans. And that was, that, that was something that never came through. In fact, there was, just, there was such a campaign on the part of the IAA and the labels and various artists who were upset with us to, to represent us as, to demonize us and, and represent our perspective as something totally different from what it was. If anything, we were like you know, these poor, broke, college-age kids that were, if anything, more like the people in bands than the people running the record labels. Yeah. And in the public, I think the, uh, it seemed like you know, a pretty even fight with a lot of people upset. But I had maybe two interactions with people with artists where they were actually mad. Every other conversation was always positive. So that seems sort of surprising to me where it felt like maybe more of us. I had to pull that guy from Creed off of you. Uh, I don't remember that. But, uh, yeah, that guy gets pulled off a lot of people. <laughs> The question is, these are stories of how our times have changed, will they make up the history books? Uh, I don't, that's a tough, I mean, I think that the reality of it is, is that there are huge sweeping changes going on in the world right now, culturally, and in terms of the flow of information, and, and that is history, there's actually no, no doubt. I mean, history book will be an e-book, it'll be pretty easy to uh, shift around to your friends, and you, know, you can add to it if you want, you make a wiki out of it. This is, this is the next movie, there are no more history books. Yeah, that's, that's actually the moral of the story, is that, yeah. There's no more record history or books. The red, red shirt, go ahead. Yes. The question is 10 years ago, they predicted very closely where we'd be today. So, where are we 10 years ahead? What's up? You don't want to know. <laughs> That's downloaded too. Dark, dark, ugly, dystopic world. 
One of the challenges with music, and this was really confusing at the start, looking at search engines, they index the web, and then if something's uh, infringing, they have the opportunity to take it down. If they had to go and get permission to index every website, we wouldn't have those search engines as, as they exist today, and Sean mentioned that about the DMCA. So from our standpoint, it seemed like there had to be some resolution, but for whatever reason, uh, you know, music was being treated very differently, and a lot of that had to do with the stranglehold of distribution and promotion. Um, I think the fact that it's hard to in to innovate on, in the music industry and provide something new and valuable without getting permission and getting authorization and playing by those rules is very unfortunate because every time I see an entrepreneur working on a digital music startup, I just tell them to run. Uh, and it, it's sad because the passion for music is there, but um, I think certainly things have improved a lot. There's a silver lining in this though, <clears throat> which is to, which is that, you know, uh, Spotify started to make some things happen with streaming music. Spotify now has APIs that allow web-based streaming music. You know, Google is following suit. Pretty soon you're gonna probably see Apple going into those markets. And and there's there's these are really well funded companies that are able to subsidize the free access to music. So you're you know, a lot of the restrictions and you know you can now set up a music blog with Spotify links or or YouTube links or you know Google's forthcoming service, you could set up a music blog and talk about music and have a conversation about it without having to go and seek licenses. That wasn't possible. And even four years ago, that wasn't possible. So, so the, the, the economic models that support you know, free and open sharing are getting better and better. And luckily, these large companies are willing to subsidize that experience. Something that was eye-opening to me in uh, looking at Spotify handled things, first of all, starting outside the US, not worrying about the US first to prove the model, made a lot of sense, but also- Sweden! <laughs> the, the idea that- uh, they would just embrace the fact that they would always be in negotiations with the labels, that there was no resolution, that they would just assume that was part of the cost of doing business. That, would, If I knew that was the case, I wouldn't have signed up, but that, that was a really, I think, a wise point of view, and I think that's helped them to kind of, you know, make it as far as they have. Um, and so I think that's part of this, this challenge is we would love it to be just like every other part of the internet where you can just have a great idea and have it succeed on its merit. But I think there's still, as um, I think Ron Conway said, in, in the movie, uh, still not nearly as far along as it, as it could be. Um, but you know, hopefully, maybe somebody in this room will fix that. Uh, we're going to take we're going to take one more. But what's so great is that for those of you that have film, gold, or platinum badges, they're interactive badges actually. Is that we are looking to have a panel with these guys Tuesday at the Long Center, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. So it's a little early for me. I know. <laughs> um, but uh, we have a whole hour with them for a conversation, which is just fantastic. Um, there was a guy all the way in the shirt, but the black shirt, yeah, the middle on the back. Um, one of the highlights is that fantastic teenage interview, talking the local television interview or footage. Um, Unfortunately, that was soon. <laughs> we, we tried very hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, did they tell you about that? Did you stumble across on research? How did you find that footage? What, the archival stuff that's in the movie? Uh, well, I wrote this movie as a narrative originally about uh, eight years ago, and I started pulling archival then. Uh, so I found most of that footage back then, and uh, it comes from a lot of different places. A lot of it actually comes from MTV News, who were at the forefront um, of covering this story. And that's one of the reasons I think that it took me so long to get this movie made, is, is people were kind of shockingly ignorant um, about uh, downloading and these new technologies even six, seven, eight years ago, uh, a lot of news services weren't even that interested in the story, or if they did, they were interested in a very kind of hyper uh, polarized view of the story. Like, these are these young pirates, this is this industry, and that's all you got. So um, it was funny, that's one of the reasons I've kept this thing in the Viacom family. I did it this with VH1 Rock Docs, uh, who were awesome and, and made this movie with me and, and the guys. and before I was working with at different strands of MTV, and they had just been at the forefront of actually treating this as a real news story. So there was a lot of coverage there. Um, I mean, just thanks, I mean, really, really grateful for you guys coming out. This is an awesome group of people, and and just, as always, humongous thanks to these guys. It's obviously their movie. <laughs> We, we should 
thank you for keeping the story going for all these years and for your persistence. Yeah. Yeah.